Hello, this is Dr. Tom with a lesson on fit classifications and pressure due to interference fits as a part of our review of pressure vessels and fits. Uh, this particular information is in the reference handbook under uh, two areas, cylindrical fits and tolerances, and then stress analysis, thick wall. So uh, let's get started. Okay, let's first talk about fit classifications. There's really uh, two, one for the U.S. customary system, which is also called the IP system, and one for the SI metric system. Now, there are three major uh, fit classifications associated with the U.S. customary system, each with uh, multiple subclassifications, and we'll talk a bit more about this in a, in a following slide. And for the SI metric, there's also three major fit classifications, each with its uh, with multiple subclassifications. Now, since the SI metric system is more recent, it is common to adapt the fits from the U.S. customary system to the uh, SI metric fit classifications. Now, uh, fits can be either hole based or shaft based. Uh, there are tables of fits in the reference handbook. However, only the uh, SI system has both hole and shaft based fits. Uh, note that capital letters are used for the hole and lowercase letters for the shaft. Okay, for U.S. customary fit classifications, these are the three uh, big areas, running and sliding fits, force and shrink fits, and then locational clearance fits. Uh, the uh, first one has nine subclassifications, the second five, and the third three. Now, the uh, reference handbook provides descriptions of each of these fit classifications uh, under the uh, keywords there. Again, note that IP stands for inch pounds, meaning basically the U.S. customary system. Now, for the SI metric fit, uh, their classifications are clearance fits, five subclassifications, transition fits, two, and then interference fits, three. And again, the uh, reference handbook provides descriptions of all of these uh, subclassifications. Also note that the SI metric system uses the ISO symbols and nomenclature. Now, just for uh, reference here, this is the uh, standard fits for the SI metric sub, the, uh, uh, the uh, five sort of uh, uh, Sliding, there's loose, free running, close running, sliding, locational clearance, there's those five there. Then there's the two transitional, locational transi transition less accurate, locational transition more accurate. Uh, and then the uh, interference ones, locational interference, medium drive, and then force. And notice again over there, hole basis, shaft basis. Notice that the uh, on the left is the hole, and you've got capital letters, uh, H all the way down for the whole base and then uh, different letters uh, and numbers uh, uh, which are defined uh, in the uh, fit classifications uh, on the right for the uh, shaft. But then for the shaft base, you still have capital letters, but notice all the uh, shaft uh, have H, just like all of the uh, hole had a capital H. So a uh, very interesting system. Okay, the following are the dimensions of a typical hole and shaft. Uh, they're given all this, uh, these tables, but they, they didn't really tell you what, what you're going to have to do with them. You kind of, they kind of assume you already know how to do that. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's give some, some uh, I, think, what I think, helpful notation that will help us be able to talk about what you're going to find in the, in the table, fit, ta fit, fit tables. First, uh, capital D, the uh, base size of the hole. Remember, capital letters are for the hole, D for the base size of the shaft. This is just sort of the base nominal size. Uh, delta D, and there'll be a delta D max and a delta D min are the tolerance limits for the hole for the U.S. customary. And then um, delta D, again, max and delta D minimum, again, uh, tolerance limits for the shaft, uh, again, just for the U.S. customary. The uh, metric uh, just goes on and gives you the diameters of the shafts for, for, um, for the um, information that's given, so a little bit different. 
Okay, so again, the U.S. customary fit information, uh, the diameters are in inches, and the tolerance limits are in thousandths of an inch. you got to be careful there. Um, and uh, for the SI system, the diameters, uh, all of them, the base, um, the maximum, and the minimum are all in millimeters. Okay, so for the hole, what you would have is the maximum diameter of the hole would be the nominal D plus the delta D max. The uh, minimum diameter of the hole would be the nominal D uh, plus the uh, delta D min. And similarly for the shaft, uh, D max would be the nominal D plus delta D max, and then the uh, D minimum would be the nominal D plus uh, uh, the uh, delta D minimum. Okay, and then for any one of the interference fits, there uh, can be a radial interference we label delta, a little delta, uh, is um, uh, needed to determine that interference pressure, and the interference pressure is what we're going to be, we, we would use in the um, thick wall cylinder equations. So what that represents, now this is a radial interference, so delta max is uh, one half, the, the difference in the diameters, and it's the difference in the maximum, the biggest interference. The maximum size the shaft can be minus the minimum size the hole can be uh, divided by two will give you the radi radial, the maximum radial uh, interference. Now that's what you're really after, but just for curiosity, we're going to calculate the minimum, uh, just again to uh, understand uh, what, what, what we're getting. We have the uh, minimum diameter of the shaft minus the maximum size of the hole divided by two would be the minimum radial um, interference. And again, this is for interference fits. Obviously, for loose or sliding, there would not be any, uh, inter any interface pressure. Okay, let's look at an example. Uh, determine the hole and shaft dimensions for a uh, RC4 close running fit with a two inch nominal size. So from the reference handbook for two inch, the uh, following information obtained for a RC4, RC4 close running fit, it's labeled ISO H8F7. So for two inches, uh, the delta D max is a positive 1.8 thousandths of an inch, or it would be uh, 0.0018 inches, and the uh, delta D minimum is zero. Now for the shaft, the nominal diameter again is two inches. Uh, the delta max is a minus uh, 0 0.012 uh, inches, or 0 0.1, uh, 1.2 thousandths, and the delta D minimum is uh, a negative 2.4 thousandths, or 0 0.0024 inches. So therefore, we can find the uh, maximum minimum diameter of the hole. Uh, the maximum is going to be the nominal plus uh, delta D max, and that would be 2.0018. Uh, and then the uh, minimum is going to actually be the nominal diameter of 2. Now for the shaft, the uh, maximum value is going to be the nominal 2. In this case, uh, you're going to take away um, 0.0012, so you get 1.9988 inches as the maximum diameter of the shaft. So clearly you can see there will be a, a, uh, a loose fit. And then the minimum is even greater. Uh, you're subtracting off uh, uh, 2.4 thousandths instead of 1.2. So your uh, minimum diameter of the shaft is 1.9976 inches. But there isn't any interference uh, uh, delta. Okay, well, let's look at example two. Uh, determine the hole and shaft dimensions for an FN4 force fit with a one inch nominal size. Now we're going to determine both the maximum and minimum radial interferences. Okay, so we go to the reference handbook for a nominal one inch uh, following information is obtained for an FN4. It's labeled ISO 87U6. Uh, the nominal one inch diameter gives you a delta D max of uh, uh, 0.8 thousandths and a delta D minimum of zero. And the shaft, the one inch nominal, is a delta D max is 0.0023 uh, and the minimum is 0.0018. 
So what we have is uh, d max is uh, the nominal diameter plus delta d max 1.008, and the minimum is the uh, the uh, nominal diameter one inch. However, the shaft, the maximum is uh, the nominal plus the 0 0.0023, and the minimum is the nominal plus 0 0.0018. So we do have a radial interference here. The maximum size of the shaft, 1.0023, minus the minimum diameter of the hole, 1. Uh, that's the difference in the diameters. Divide by 2 to give you the radial interference of 0.00115 inches. And that's what we'll use in, a, in an equation shortly to get the pressure, interface pressure. But of course, for curiosity, let's find the delta min. Uh, the the uh, shaft minimum uh, diameter minus the maximum hole diameter divided by 2 gives us a smaller number as we would expect, 0 0.0005 inches. Okay, well, let's determine the hole and shaft dimensions for a sliding fit with an 80 millimeter nominal size. So we're going to do some things here in the metric system. Use the hole basis fit tolerances. So that's a whole set of tables for hole and there's a whole set of tables for shaft. Make sure you see that in the, uh, in the tables that are provided. Okay, so once you go to the uh, hole basis tables for 80 millimeters, uh, noting that it's a ISO 87G6, uh, all of these diameters are right there. The maximum diameter of the uh, hole 80.03, the minimum di diameter of the nominal diameter 80, the maximum diameter of the shaft uh, 79.990, so you can see we have a, uh, uh, a sliding fit, and then the minimum is 79.971, even smaller. Okay, well, let's look, though, at a, at a hole in a shaft dimensions for a medium drive fit with a 200 millimeter nominal size. Uh, and we're going to use the shaft basis here. And uh, since it's a uh, drive fit, uh, we're going to determine the maximum and minimum radial interferences. So if you go to the shaft basis tables and for 200 millimeters and note that it's an ISO S7H6, uh, the maximum diameter of the uh, hole is 199.895, the minimum is 199.849, the uh, maximum diameter of the hole of the shaft is 200 and the minimum is 199.971. So the interference, again, is the maximum diameter of the shaft, 200, minus the minimum diameter of the hole, 199,849, divide by 2, get 0 0.0755 millimeters as the maximum interference. Again, uh, for curiosity, although it was asked for, the minimum is going to be the minimum diameter of the shaft minus the maximum diameter of the hole, and there we get a smaller number, 0 0.0380 uh, zero millimeters. Okay, now that we've uh, come up with uh, these uh, deltas, uh, let's look at the uh, uh, stresses that happen in these interference fit stresses. Uh, we have an outside collar uh, that is considered a thick wall cylinder, and we've got an inside shaft that it can uh, either be solid or it too could be a thick wall cylinder. Uh, the uh, uh, inside diameter uh, is A, although that may, may come out to be zero or B zero because it's a solid shaft. You have the nominal uh, radius really is B, and then the outside radius is, uh, of the collar is C. So at the nominal radius B, uh, the radius of the hole in the collar increases in amount delta sub zero, and the radius of the shaft decreases in amount delta sub I. So without, uh, without proof, uh, this is the equation that's in the reference a handbook for the increased delta zero in the radius of a collar is given this. Uh, what we have is P is the interface pressure that we're really looking for to use in the thick wall cylinder equations. Uh, B again is the nominal uh, radius. E sub zero is the modulus elasticity of the collar. And of course the dimension C, C, B, and then the new zero is Poisson's ratio for the collar. 
Well, similarly, the decrease uh, delta sub i in the radius of the shaft is a, is a similar expression, but notice the minus sign out front. It's PB over EI. You've got B squared plus A squared, and A squared may, uh, A may be zero if it's a solid shaft. And then again, nu I is the Poisson's ratio of the shaft. So all of that uh, is, uh, is there, okay? Now, the radi total radial interference is the sum of those, uh, del delta zero plus delta I. Now, in the reference handbook, they have absolute values around the delta sub zero, but uh, that really isn't necessary because it's going to be positive. But the uh, delta sub I is, it's a negative, so the absolute value, we're now going to put a plus. So all we've done here is added the two equations from the previous slide for, for the worst case scenario. Different, different materials and a hole in the uh, shaft. Okay, so then now when the uh, radial interference is determined from a particular interference fit, which we've done earlier, we'll be given that now, then we can then calculate from this equation a little bit of uh, arithmetic and, and lots of algebra. Uh, we can determine that interface pressure again to be used in the uh, appropriate thick wall cylinder equations. Okay, well now some simplifications can happen. If the collar and shaft are made out of the same material, then the interface pressure can be determined from this expression that again is uh, uh, in, uh, in the reference handbook, and this is the outer member because it's got the C squared term in it. Again, the uh, A squared could go away if the shaft is solid. And if the shaft is solid, then the pressure we can, of the A, uh, A squared can go away. And uh, this equation is also given uh, in the reference handbook, uh, E delta over 2BC squared times C squared minus B squared. But you know me, uh, uh, if you divide the, the C squared in the second two terms, you end up with um, a 1 minus B over C quantity squared times the E delta over 2B. So again, it helps uh, to do a little bit of algebra on these uh, uh, complex equations before trying to substitute numbers in, especially if after you calculate, you end up may end up with uh, an answer that's not there, and this gives you a, a way to go back and, and find your error. Okay, let's look at example five here. We want to determine the interface pressure for an assembly of a solid steel shaft and an aluminum collar where the nominal radius is one inch and the radial interference has already been determined to be 0 0.005 inches. Uh, outside radius of the collar is three inches. Uh, steel, we're going to use uh, E of 29 million, a Poisson's ratio of 0.28. For the aluminum, use E 10 million PSI and a Poisson's ratio of 0.35. Okay, so uh, the shaft and collar are uh, two different materials, so we got to start with this, uh, with the, the worst case scenario um, is here. Uh, also, since the shaft is solid, now it does give us a little benefit, the uh, A squared goes away, so that simplifies the second term. And uh, what it also does is allow um, the uh, radius, the nominal radius B, to be moved to the left-hand side of the uh, equation. Okay, repeating that one on the, from the bottom of the previous slide here at the top, we can now put in what we're given, the delta 0 0.0005 inches divided by the nominal radius B, the P, that's what we're looking for, the E sub zero, the aluminum collar, 10 MSI, the dimension C, uh, C squared and B squared, uh, again, the second term, P over the uh, E of the steel shaft, uh, 29 million, again, one minus 0.28. So it's now just some, some arithmetic. And so this is a, a simplification here of uh, some of the terms here. Again, I would leave a lot of breadcrumbs uh, with your the pad that they give you. Uh, don't get in a hurry. As I always say, you always have time uh, to work the problems you know how to, how to work. So take your time. Okay, so I've just taken that again. Uh, the bottom equation to the top here, done some simplifications in a couple of steps, and we've got now 0.005 on the left, P times 0.185 divided by MSI. So we saw for that we get the interface pressure of uh, 2.7 KSI. Okay, 
Well, that concludes the presentation. Again, as always, we uh, appreciate you allowing us to help you prepare for this exam.